Hi, and in this Photoshop tutorial I'm going to show you several different ways that you can cut out objects in Photoshop. Now lots of people have been asking how you get rid of this checkered background and why it's there. So firstly I'm just going to go through that issue and then after that I will show you how to cut things out. I'll put the time at the bottom so if you don't want to know about PNG files then you can just scroll through and I'll show you the several different techniques I use to cut objects out. So I've got these two files up here and as you can see in my layers panel I have one here to the left and this is a PNG file. Now that means that this has no background, it's just an object floating on its own with no background. I've got another image here at the top which is a screenshot of exactly the same image but this one is a JPEG and this has the checkerboard background which lots of people have been questioning why they have it and how to get rid of it. Now the difference between these two files is that this is basically a photograph of what is on your screen irrespective of this checkerboard background that you could say that indicates it doesn't have a background but you've actually taken a photograph of it. Alternatively if you've just downloaded a file and it's just a JPEG then again you'll get this checkerboard background. So I've just got this image from Pixabay which is a website which allows you to download free images and the screenshot I took was just of this element here and then I literally dragged and dropped it into Photoshop. But as you can see if you go to the free download and you actually download it then you go to your downloads you will see here that the download is a PNG image and that basically means that the checkerboard won't appear when you import your image and that's exactly what I've done. I've simply just imported this file into Photoshop which has given me this image here. So you need to make sure that if you are getting images from the internet that firstly there are no copyright issues and secondly that you're downloading the right sort of file. It may be that you've been sent the wrong file such as a logo or something, you just need to go back and ask them for the PNG file. Alternatively, if you've made a particular shape or design in Photoshop and you've exported it as a JPEG, when you re-import it into Photoshop, it will come as a white background. So if you wanted to change the background, let's say for example, you wanted this to be a grey background, what will happen is if you've saved it as a JPEG, everything around here will be white. So you have to save it as a PNG file. Now the added bonus with PNG files is that you can stretch them. So if I go to my transform tool now, if I make it really small, press OK, and then I transform it again and pull it back, you can see that I don't lose any quality. However, if I go to this file, which is not a smart object and it's not a PNG file and therefore it's not a vector, if I go to my transform tool, and I reduce the size of it, click OK. If I then go back to my transform tool and I restretch it, you can see how pixelated it is. And that's because it's a JPEG. So those are the two real differences between these two files and you'll know what sort of file that you need. However, if you have got an image that does have this checkerboard background, then obviously you're going to want to take it out. So we'll just hide this image for the time being, move this over, and now I'll show you all the different techniques that you can use to cut this out. Now this is a really simple image with really simple colours. Now there will be challenges you come across if you are trying to cut something out that is a little bit more challenging. But if it is something simple then there are easier techniques to use. So the first technique is to go down to this icon here which is the magic wand tool. Just click on that, bring it over, make sure you are on your screenshot layer or your image layer and then just click. As you can see, it's highlighted the vast majority of the green colour, but not the lighter green colours. So all you need to do is to just put the plus sign over the lighter green. And as you can see, it's adding it to the selection. Now if I double click, occasionally it will 
register that I want to get rid of all of them and it will suddenly and the dotted line will disappear and add those lighter green sections to the selection. Now once you're happy with the outline here there are a variety of different techniques. I generally will command and control C and copy and paste this selection. So command or control C, command or control V. If you go over to your layers panel what you'll see is now you have a copy of this cactus. If I switch off the copy below you can see that we've now cut out this cactus. I'll just use the move tool. You cut out your cactus and now it no longer has that background. You can go ahead and get rid of the layer underneath if you want to but do remember to get rid of the white background. I've just got that on there for demonstration purposes and then you can save this out as a PNG file. So alternatively let's go back to the original image. The second technique would be to go back up to the magic wand tool, click on the little tiny triangle in the bottom right corner and go up to the quick selection tool. Now I've got my brush on about 40 and I've got the settings to add. Now all I'm going to do is to click and drag my brush over my image. Now that's perfect because this image is so simple. But if you use this technique on other things where the background is quite complicated or quite fussy, you will find that this will pick up colours and areas that you don't want it to. But it's great for simple shapes like this or if the background is really simple and plain. So again, once you've selected the area that you want, again I just simply copy and paste. And then once again, you've got your image isolated. And then the next technique I would use is to go up to the magnetic lasso tool, which is this triangle with a little magnet, and go down to the magnetic lasso tool. Now what this tool does is as you drag the arrow around the edge of your selection, it will identify the pixels that are directly in contrast with each other and it will follow the line of your object. Again, this won't work well if you have a complicated background or it's quite blurry where the pixels aren't sharp. It will tend to fly off and try to highlight other areas. But if you've got something like this, which is relatively simple, then it's a great tool to use to make your selection. Try to keep the arrow as close to the edge of your selection and then just go back up to the beginning. And again, you've got the running ants. Copy and paste again. And once again, you have isolated your selection. So the final technique that I'm going to use to cut this out is probably the most accurate, but I think probably the most dreaded by most people, and that's the pen tool. So here's the pen tool here, just click, and now I'm just going to zoom in. Now there are quite a number of tutorials online which will show you how to use the pen tool, so I'm not going to go through in detail how to use it, but I'll just give you a general overview of how I use it, because I think it's a brilliant tool once you can master it. So I generally start somewhere at the beginning of a curve, not generally on the middle of a curve, but it's completely up to you. So I'll select this point here, just click, and then I'll go to the next point here and click. If I can see that my line doesn't quite follow that curve, if there is a curve, then I'll just click in the center of it, and you'll see these handles will appear here. I generally try not to touch the handles unless it is a funny angle. And I will just hit my Command or Control key and hover over that central point and you see it clicks into an arrow. Then I can click on that point and move it anywhere I want to to suit the curve. Then I'll just move my object down and just click. There's no need to make a curve if you don't have to but this curve here I would generally click over this side, click in the middle hold my command or control key down whilst I click in the center here and then just move this down to the middle. Now as you can see it hasn't quite followed this line here 
So it's at this point when I would go to my handle here, click my Option key or Alt key, and then just move that handle up or in to where it creates that perfect curve. These handles can be moved inwards, outwards, up and down, and you just have to play around with it. But once you've got the technique and you understand how this works, it means you'll be able to cut out anything in Photoshop. So here there's quite an enormous curve. So I'd go to this point right up here, because I find the fewer points that you make, the less clunky your final selection will be. So I haven't quite made that curve. So again, hit the Alt or Option key until it turns into a little arrow on this handle. And just move that handle there. And then again, pull this one up. And I have to make this one quite long because I want the curve to stretch right to the top. And then again, I'll go over to here, click in the middle, hold my command or control key down, grab the middle and go to the top. So I think it'll fit about here and just to try to move those handles. Now, if the handles aren't in a straight line, it means you will get a slightly clunky angle. So if I move it up here like this, you can see that that curve will be slightly clunky at this point here. If I just zoom in, you can see you won't get a nice rounded curve. So it's quite important that if you do want a good curve, is to keep those handles in a straight line. You just need to pull and push until you get the perfect curve. Okay, so I'll go ahead and select the rest of this, speed the video up and come back when I'm done. And once you're happy with your selection, just click on the first point you made and you'll see that your pen tool creates a little circle next to it and then just click. Go inside your selection and right click, go down to make selection and then you can feather your selection if you want to or if you don't just put zero in this box. Make sure you've got new selection ticked and then click OK. And once again you've got the running ants. And then Command or Control C, Command or Control V, and down here I've made another copy. Press the Move tool and again you've isolated your shape. So those are all the different techniques that I would use to cut something out in Photoshop. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. Generally I always use the pen tool because it is the most accurate, but it is not the quickest. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.